all living things respire, which means they break down sugar in order to release energy. In humans, this sugar comes from the food we eat. Plants, however, make their own sugar in photosynthesis. They need this sugar in order to be able to respire, which releases the stored energy so that it can be put to work to run all the processes that living things need to do, such as making proteins, actively transporting substances, growing and so on. So what does a plant need to photosynthesize and where does it come from? The word equation for photosynthesis is here. Carbon dioxide plus water goes to make glucose plus oxygen. Photosynthesis requires light energy. The word means making using light. It's interesting to note that it's exactly the opposite of the word equation which summarizes aerobic respiration. Whilst every cell needs the reactants for respiration, only those specialized for photosynthesis need to be supplied with carbon dioxide and water. Photosynthesis happens in chloroplasts in plant cells, which contain a pigment called chlorophyll. This pigment is green, so any part of a plant that is green is able to photosynthesize. This mostly means the leaves. So let's look at how leaves are adapted to photosynthesize. We're looking at how they get light, carbon dioxide and water to cells containing chloroplasts. If we look at a cross section of a leaf, we can see the structure more clearly. Remember, the chloroplasts are a part of the cell that photosynthesize. We can see that there are more chloroplasts in this layer of cells towards the top of the leaf. These cells are called palisade cells and are packed in tightly together without spaces so that as many as possible fit into the leaf. Above them is a waxy cuticle, which is waterproof, to prevent the leaf losing too much water. Below the palisade layer is a layer of cells with gaps between them. This is the spongy mesophyll layer, and the gaps between cells allow gases to move between the palisade layer and the underside of the leaf easily by diffusion. The underside of the leaf is solid except for holes called stomata. These open and close during the day controlled by the guard cells around them to allow carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. Through the leaf there are veins containing xylem vessels that deliver water absorbed in the roots. So we have seen how carbon dioxide, water and light reach chloroplasts to enable them to photosynthesize. This makes glucose and oxygen. The oxygen diffuses back out of the leaf through the stomata and is released into the air. The glucose dissolves into the phloem channels that run alongside the xylem through the plant. Through the phloem, the glucose diffuses around the plant to every cell that needs it for respiration. Let's take a look at the factors that affect how fast a plant can photosynthesize. The rate of photosynthesis can be measured as how much glucose or oxygen is being produced. For plants living underwater, such as waterweed, it's easy to count the number of oxygen bubbles produced in a certain time period to measure this. Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide, so if there's none, then the plant will not photosynthesize at all. Increasing the amount of carbon dioxide available increases the rate of photosynthesis. During this time, carbon dioxide is the limiting factor. It's the thing that's stopping the plant from photosynthesizing faster. Eventually, increasing the amount of carbon dioxide further has no more effect because something else is now the limiting factor. It could be water, light or temperature. The graph levels off to show this. Looking at how light intensity affects the rate of photosynthesis, we get a similar shaped graph. No light at all means no photosynthesis. This is why at night the guard cells close the stomata to reduce water loss when there's no point in allowing carbon dioxide into the leaf when there's no photosynthesis taking place. Increasing the light intensity increases the rate of photosynthesis until something else becomes the limiting factor. Increasing the light intensity beyond this point has no further effect on the rate of photosynthesis. As with all other chemical reactions taking place in living cells, photosynthesis is controlled by enzymes. These are proteins that act as biological catalysts, speeding up the reaction. As with all enzyme reactions, there's an optimum temperature for the reaction to take place at. 
colder than this and the reaction slows down. If it's hotter than the optimum, the heat energy denatures the enzyme so that its shape is altered and it no longer works. This is why the graph falls rapidly at temperatures above the optimum. So photosynthesis is how plants make sugar. It takes place in chloroplasts in leaves which are adapted to increase the amount of carbon dioxide, water and light that reach them. The rate of photosynthesis is affected by carbon dioxide concentration, light intensity and temperature.